from Airborne Assault and I'd like to welcome you to a series of short videos that we're working with with Simon from his YouTube channel Rifleman Moore and just as an introduction really to show you around our wonderful collection of items associated with the British Airborne Forces. So this is actually in a separate cabinet we're going to look at a moment in a cabinet which runs a timeline from the Second World War through to pretty much the modern day uh, in a, a modicum of detail. The whole point of this really is to give you an introduction to the sort of thing you can see at Airborne Assault and if you want to come and have a look yourself there's a lot more detail of course in the captions and so forth and the, the placards in the display cabinets telling you about the kits and so forth. This is just a run through to give you an idea of what you can see in the museum or one of the more interesting elements which is the uh, timeline of the development of kit. And what we have here of course is a very early British uh, parachutist some of the kit has moved on from the very earliest uh, elements, such as the boots. These are standard issue British Army boots at the time. Early boots had actually been copied from the Fallschirmjäger, the German parachutists. One element of that initial sort of copied uniform that we can still see here is the step-in smock, uh, which has actually been, this is an original which was used by uh, its former owner for painting, as you can see here. Um, very rare item, uh, but this has actually been used as an overall um, after its uh, military service. Obviously the parachute harness worn over that and then we have an interesting feature again of early British Airborne Forces which is the uh, Mark VI respirator house hack modified with a tab on each side to attach upside down to the parachute harness which is how these were worn early on. And then of course wearing the Bunnagy or Sorbo training helmet which we've talked about in previous videos. This of course being a rubber ring essentially worn around the head for crash protection protected from knocking your head. Okay, so what we've got here is the start of our timeline case and Simon will take you through some of the mannequins and the equipment in the rest of the film. But essentially what you'll see on each mannequin is a, an incremental development of equipment from the early days of the Second World War all the way through to present day Pathfinders. But there's also a striking similarity. The camouflage pattern may change, but it essentially boils down to a smock, a parachute and a heavy amount of equipment for each man to carry. So starting with the timeline here, obviously having moved on from the early training mannequin, which has the sorbet helmet and so forth, we're now into operational um, clothing here. And we have a mannequin set up with a full set of equipment ready to jump here, obviously the helmet, of the airborne smock, the, the Denison smock. Uh, and then uh, over that, we actually have the, um, the over smock, which you can see the lower part of here, made in green denim. On top of that, we have the airborne life jacket, and you can see the next type parachute harness here. And um, we have both a leg bag here, which could be used to drop relatively heavy equipment. And then obviously a sleeve here for the rifle as well. And when jumping, of course, these fall down behind you on a, on a line, hit the ground first, and you then give some time for the parachutists to decelerate before they actually hit the ground themselves. And then just a little bit further along in the, ca in the cabinet here in the case, uh, hopefully you can see that clearly. Uh, it's a set of uh, body armor uh, an original set of the body armour that was issued, not only to airborne troops, but certainly well known uh, for being issued to airborne troops, uh, with a plate at the chest and one lower down as well, and there is one to the rear as well, to give some rudimentary protection. We also have here a fully loaded Bergen rucksack, as you can see there, a Second World War example, uh, and this has obviously a toggle rope attached, fully loaded, uh, allows a much heavier load to be carried than the, the pack and the haversack combined from the 1937 pattern equipment allows you to carry a very heavy load, also used by commandos of course, and then underneath, uh, lower down, we actually have the entrenching tool buckled onto that, so that big heavy load is carried all in one, one uh, load on the back. So what we have here, moving along uh, from the Second World War uh, paratrooper, we have a mannequin set up to represent the paratrooper of the 1950s and 60s, uh, and what we actually here have here uh, is quite an advance in terms of the, the parachute and the equipment, and we now have a reserve and we have a PX harness for the parachute, so you've got not only the parachute on the back, but the reserve on the front here as well. Um, still wearing a very similar steel helmet, uh, obviously this type had been introduced during the Second World War, and a post-war issue of Denison smock, but still very similar camouflage, very similar construction. We also have here a container for a three-inch mortar barrel, uh, again, very similar operation to the leg bag and the rifle uh, sleeve. Uh, in the way that it drops down below. In this instance, the paratrooper is wearing copley wobbly boots, as they're known. Uh, these are boots cold wet, where they're introduced for use in Korea. And as mentioned previously in other videos, these were commonly used by the parachute regiment. They were quite a, uh, quite the preferred footwear for, for a while, uh, certainly in this time period, the 1950s and 1960s. 
So uh, there we are, that's the next mannequin along in the display cabinet. We'll move on now and have a look at the next one. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to film this chap, but this is a chap from the 1970s. Um, again, you can see still using the Bergen rucksack here, which we looked at previously, a later example of it, but basically the same. Still fairly common in this time period. And we have 1958 pattern web equipment here. You can see that clearly. So we've moved on from the 1937 pattern worn earlier to 1958 pattern. And we have the reserve parachute here. We have a smock known as the banana smock for a slang term for it due to the particular pattern. Still very similar to the set war uh, camouflage, but, but distinct from it. Uh, we've not yet moved to DPM, which we'll take a look at in a minute. He's still wearing the steel helmet there. Uh, and we can see this particular chap operating a radio and you can see the headset worn underneath the helmet there. Um, so that's uh, 1970s. We'll move on now to have a look at uh, something a little bit more modern. Okay, so here we have something a lot more modern. Uh, and this is representing a uh, paratrooper in the, the 1990s into the 2000s. And we've had a move to DPM cloth for the uniform, both trousers and smock are made in the standard British Army camouflage at the time, DPM. We've had a, an update for the helmet as well, no longer using a steel helmet that was changing, began to change in the 1970s. By this time, there's been a move away from that and you now have a, a more, much more up-to-date design of helmet. Parachutist life jacket worn up there, you can see here just above the reserve parachute, obviously worn on the front again. And we have the soldier's Bergen rucksack at the front here in a harness, which again can be released from the body, fall away, and that will hit the ground first on a line, which we can see here on the front of this one, on the back of this one rather here. Uh, and that uh, obviously hits the ground and then allows us some deceleration uh, with that reduced weight before the paratrooper themselves actually hit the ground. Uh, so as I say, much more up to date, much more modern uniform and equipment. Uh, we have one more mannequin to look at now uh, at the very far end of the uh, cabinet here, which we'll talk about in brief as well. Okay, so the final mannequin we're going to look at here is a relatively up to date. <laughs> Things change so quickly. Yeah, the museum have problem keeping up with the, the current kit, but re relatively up to date uh, Pathfinder. So we have uh, Halo equipment here, so the helmet and the oxygen mask and so the, the, the mask worn there. You can see the parachute harness and so forth here again. Um, we have a very large Bergen rucksack at the front here, again on a harness which can be released away from the body, as we talked about previously. You can see the clips of that here, and a custom made. Um, chest rig here you can see with the various pouches along the front, you see radio in this one here, ammunition pouches across the front. Uh, these are custom made for Pathfinders, so quite an unusual bit of kit and obviously provided to the museum uh, to set up this mannequin uh, to give a, an example of relatively recent uh, British airborne troops, so say Pathfinders specifically. So that's the most up-to-date mannequin in this uh, run through. So there we are, that was the first in a series of videos which have been filmed at the Airborne Assault Museum, which is of course within IWM Duxford, and will be opening again soon. I believe it's set to open at the start of August, so well worth a visit, I can highly recommend it. And the idea of these videos is to give you a little bit of an insight into what's on display in the museum, what you can see there. And we got the opportunity to look at some very unusual items, some very rare items, which will be coming up in future videos. And I want to say a massive thank you to John, the curator, for giving the opportunity to visit the museum during lockdown uh, whilst it was closed and film and uh, handle some of the unusual items they have in their collection. So it was absolutely fantastic. And as I say, this is the first of a series which will be coming out over the next few weeks. So if you'd like to see those and then you've enjoyed watching this and found it interesting, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you're newly subscribing or you've already subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell down below the little notification button next to the subscribe button. This, of course, will alert you when I upload future videos. There's also the opportunity, if you really like my uploads, to support the channel through Patreon or PayPal. There are links to both of those down below. And a massive thank you, as ever, to everyone who supports the channel using those methods. I really do greatly appreciate it. If you want to keep up with other things that are going on around the channel, there's social media as well as Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all linked down below. But if you want to make contact but you don't really use social media, there's also an email address linked down there as well. But that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, I think. So until next time, bye for now.